Matvey Michkov's draft position is one of the most hotly debated topics in the NHL this season. Some mock drafts have him going as high as number two with some talent that rivals Connor Bedard, and some don't even have him in the top five. In this video, we'll be going through the case for and against Matvey Michkov so you can make the decision for yourself. Matvey Michkov has one of the best shots we've seen from a prospect in ages. He rivals someone like Alex Ovechkin coming into the NHL. The only player in this draft that can even compare talent-wise is Connor Bedard. But Jesse, there are a lot of scouts, a lot of draft experts saying that Matvey Michkov might not even go into the top five. But for me, I think there's a huge case for and against Michkov. Let's start by looking at his stats. Of course, Jesse, he plays right now for Sochi HC and had 20 points in 27 games as a barely 18-year-old in a low-scoring man's league in Russia. What have you seen from Michkov against other adults at his age and his size that has made you say, wow, this guy might be the real deal? Just the fact that he's so incredibly dynamic offensively. And I think when you're being compared with the likes of a generational talent, in Connor Bedard, you have to pay attention. It's going to be so interesting, though. You're right, Josh. Like, he's the most intriguing prospect of this draft. Like, we know Connor Bedard is going to go first. We almost mm. even know the draft order in a lot of ways uh, to a high degree. But the one variable in all of this is where is Matt Vey Mitchkov going to land? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's a lot of risk. Sure, we'll get into that later. But the upside for this kind of prospect is absolutely insane. Let's take a look at some of his stats, not only from the KHL, but from the MHL, the Russian Under-20 League, and the Russia Under-16 League. Matvey Michkov was setting records left and right. Not only did, as we mentioned, he scored 20 points in 27 games for a bad Sochi team at the age of 18. But look above there. He had 70 goals in Russia Under-16, and he set a goals and points record for a 16 year old player in under 20 when he played in the MHL there in 2020 2021 where he had 35 goals and 17 assists he is the real deal and most scouts have him as the second most talented player in the draft some even saying like he could be better than Bedard Jesse when you see a guy like this when you see a guy that is being compared to Alex Ovechkin and Andre Vasilevsky as the best Russian prospect to come through the NHL I find it hard to say that he shouldn't go at least top three. Um, just in your mind, if you're comparing him and Bedard, is there really that much of a gap, just talent-wise, where you could definitively say one of them long-term will be way better than the other? Well, I think Connor Bedard is definitely the more complete player, but I really like to think of them kind of in the Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin, Connor Bedard... Um, you know, Matvey Mitchkov, um, you know, because I feel they're very similar in many types of ways where, of course, coming into the NHL, you know, Crosby was touted as much more of the complete player, um, you know, getting much more of assists where, you know, Alex Ovechkin is more of the offensive dynamite, you know, the goal scorer. Obviously, there's the same implications with, you know, the Canadian and Russian players as well. But yeah. I almost feel like this is really history repeating itself in a lot of ways. And we're not just making this comparison to Ovechkin lightly, like, at the pace that he's scoring right now in the KHL, at his age, he's outscoring Ovechkin. Mm -hmm. And he's not just outscoring him by a little bit, by a considerable margin. And Josh, we're talking in Alice Ovechkin and who's going to be the greatest goal scorer in NHL history. Yep. For me, if you have a chance of a player who's following in the steps better than Kaprizov, better than Panarin, you know, at his age, better than Ovechkin, as we named it's. For me, it's so hard not to take a flyer on this type of player. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in recent years, I saw some people comparing some stats for goals scored in different leagues. And the names that are coming up, again, Alex Ovechkin, Vladimir Tarasenko, even though Mitchkov has a higher upside because Tarasenko was a bit older doing the same thing. He's absolutely ridiculous. And you're right. When you have a potentially franchise-altering player, if you are willing to take that risk, I think you have to go for it. And when people say risk, we'll get into some maybe bigger concerns about it a bit later. But one that I hear a lot is, well, will he even come over to the NHL? Jesse, of course, he signed through 2025-26. We'll mention his contract a bit later too, but 
The thing is, look at the Russian prospects that recently, in the past even year or two, that have come over to the NHL and have had an immediate impact. You look at someone like Kuzmenko on the Vancouver Canucks, or even Pod Colson on the same team. Kuzmenko comes in and is like a 40-goal scorer in his first season after being hyped. Someone like Kirill Kaprizov, who spent something like six years on his contract in Russia before coming over to the Minnesota Wild and immediately being like a perennial Hart Trophy contender there really are not that many cases since the Soviet Union collapsed of NHL players truly sticking in the KHL long term. So, I mean, do you think like seeing these other guys, maybe even Mitchkov himself, seeing someone like Kaprizov, seeing someone like Kuzmenko, Podkolzin, and, and even like guys like you mentioned, Panarin and Ovechkin with his amazing impact on the Russian NHL world, do you think that could really affect Mitchkov's decision long term to, to come over? What other factors do you might be at, uh, might think be at play? Well, I think to be honest, like we've heard in the past, like even of last year with the draft where we're, there was a lot of rumors that no Russians would be drafted in the first round. When in fact, we ended up seeing three players, no drafted Russian players drafted in that first round. And I believe it'll be a similar story this year, even though we're kind of hearing a lot of rumors from certain scouts, Josh, that, um, you know, are mentioning that they don't think that, again, that any Russian is going to be selected in the first round. I would have to say that, in my opinion, I, I disagree with that fact. Um, you know, just from that track record that we've spoke about in the past, I believe there's too much money to be made, not only for the player, but just for the businesses, for the NHL as a whole. And I believe that there's another facet to consider in this of Russia eventually, um, you know, will allow and continuing to allow their players to come to the NHL. And that would be the involvement in the Olympics, which we know is a very big factor, very important for Russia. And they know that they need to cooperate with the NHL in order to have that involvement as well, especially when it comes to ice hockey and everything else. So in my opinion, I definitely feel like there's just too many factors working in him eventually coming to the NHL, even though it might take a while. For sure. And one thing too, though, if we want to like transition a bit more away from the, the whole situation around him, just to his game. I mean, we've said he's an elite goal scorer. We showed you some clips. From, from scouts themselves who watch him play, his shot is more than NHL ready. People are saying that Mitchkov might have one of the best shots in the NHL if he came in today as an 18-year-old. Now, one thing that we did see from Mitchkov when he played for St. Petersburg in those first few games before he got moved to Sochi, he was seen as like the guy. He was trying to dangle through defenses, trying to be the guy to score every single time. But when he got to Sochi, it seems like... He kind of just changed his personality, really bought into a system and has tried to get himself in better positioning on the offensive end and even a bit on the defensive end. A guy like this who at 18 is trying to like not even necessarily be the guy every single night is already learning to use his shot to its maximum potential by putting himself in the best possible situations offensively and not just trying to show off and be that guy like a lot of other 18 year olds do. I think that really bodes well for an NHL contract. It's so true, you know, and if you love hockey, go check out some highlights from him, Cubs. They're absolutely amazing. Just his ability, um, you know, to get to the slot and to make those shots through traffic. Like, I'm just amazed and kind of watching him play, um, you know, just how quick, like, look at how many people he has in front of him that stick. It's his quick release that allows him to get these shots off in traffic, which is completely, completely elite. And just his movement on the ice, finding these spots and, you know, even though his defensive game isn't the best, he's showing that when it can lead to offense, that he can create those breakaways as well, those takeaways as well. So showing a lot of hot, high hockey IQ as well. Yeah, for sure. Mitchkov is one of the best prospects we've seen in ages. It just so happens that he's in the same year as Connor Bedard. But Jesse, there's a reason that a lot of scouts don't have him necessarily going number two in every single mock draft. Some I've seen drop as low as seven down to the Flyers' current draft position. Of course, this is being recorded before the draft lottery is out, so we don't know the order. But there is a reasonable case against Mitch Cobb. As much of an offensive upside as he has, as much potential as he has to be a generational goal scorer, perennial 50-goal guy, a franchise-changing player, there are some issues. First off, as we kind of alluded to a bit earlier, it's a notable concern that teams will have to weigh his current commitment to play in Russia. Last year, he signed a contract extension with St. Petersburg that will keep him in the Eastern Hemisphere through the 2025-26 season, meaning any team considering drafting him will have to be willing to wait a few years before they can inject his talent into their lineup. Now, I understand from some teams' perspectives, maybe if you don't have a lot of money, not having a guy come over early can help you a bit. But you gotta think, Jesse, when, when there's a lot of young teams looking at drafting their next franchise superstar, 
it's kind of a hard pill to swallow that this guy will only come over when he's already starting to hit his peak and hasn't had a time to gel with, with some of the young guys. Do you think this is a legitimate concern that you know, he might not be there for the formative years uh, of a team's development? Or do you think the examples of Russian players in the NHL already coming over at the age of like 23, 24 have kind of quelled those, uh, those concerns? Well, I think Matt Dave Mitchkoff is a long-term investment, mm -hmm. and those are the best type to make, as we've seen with you know Kaprizov, Panarin. Like a lot of these Russian players, they're the most elite, dynamic players in our league, right? And there's a track record of that. And the fact that he's scoring at a higher pace at a younger age, like I really feel, um, you know, that we really shouldn't underestimate that. So I absolutely believe, you know, that he's just got this incredible potential and. I think it's definitely going to be worth the wait for him to be here. But at the same time, I understand not having him under your development coaches right away, mm -hmm. let's say at the AHL level, um, where you would have it. But at the same time, and just the way that he's showing out in the KHL, he's showing that he's making the most of his time. So I don't feel like it will be time lost. They'll more just need to kind of communicate from a distance until he really gets here to the NHL. Yeah, I think so too. And I think the example a lot of people will throw around is someone like Kaprizov who, who took you know, the Minnesota Mild, right, the boring team in the NHL into a team everyone likes to watch and has single-handedly pulled them into a playoff spot basically with his goal scoring. Uh, they got a bit of help, of course, from guys Garrick's Neck and Boldy, but... But I think that's a pretty good comparison when you're looking at someone who will be a similar age coming over. Kaprizov, of course, isn't put, didn't put up the numbers that Mitchkov did. In fact, Kaprizov was really not a highly touted prospect, went as a fourth round pick mainly because of his speed. But the fact that Mitchkov is seen as like a much better prospect than Kaprizov was is, is pretty interesting to say the least. Um, but another thing, Jesse... Another big concern that I'm seeing from a lot of fans, the teams in the lottery, Habs fans, uh, maybe like Sharks fans, Blackhawks fans, when you're looking at Mitchkov, it's like these teams in the middle of a rebuild, I guess the Sharks don't necessarily fit that bill. I don't really know what they're doing. But at the same time, when you're in the middle of a rebuild, you need to make sure if you have a top five pick in a draft like this that has been you know, described as one of the best in ages, how exciting this is. A lot of clubs are looking to hold on to their picks. You can get first round talent in the second round. This is one of the deepest drafts we've seen in a long time. So if you have a top five pick in a stacked, star-studded 2023 NHL draft, as a GM and as a team, as an organization, a lot of people are saying you can't afford to mess this pick up. Because if you're drafting this guy that you want to be franchise-altering, and there's a lot of other good talents on like Leo Carlson, Will Smith, I mean, and of course, Connor Bedard himself, there's a lot of guys right up there with Matvey Michkov that are more of a guarantee. You know they'll come to the NHL. You know that they'll make a big impact. Where someone like Michkov is like, that scratching at the back of your head at all, at all times that the guy that you're drafting to be the cornerstone of your franchise might never actually play for you. Do you think that's a valid concern? Because to me... That, it's got to be scary if you're an NHL GM really trying to build for the future. It would be the safer pick, you know, to go with somebody else at that spot. But that being said, Josh, like how often do generational talents come across? Mm -hmm. Because I believe that Connor, you know, that Matt Vane Mitchkoff could be right up there with Connor Bedard in terms of like, I think he's going to score more goals per years in the NHL than Connor Bedard. Being a generational talent like that, like we saw with Crosby, we now have seen it with McDavid, like, how much of a gap was there? You know, maybe seven, like almost like 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like between those two players. So they really don't come along often. When you got, you know, a crack at it, like at this draft, I think instead of just saying, okay, because there's lots of good picks, I think you really need to try and go for the cream of the crop because it just doesn't come across very often. That's fair too. It's it, it's such a difficult decision and there's such a big trade-off with someone like Mitch Coven. You know, when we say these risks, these concerns that he signed in Russia, we kind of said earlier, look at these Russian players coming over, but Jesse, there is a pretty notable case and there has been some rumors about Russia, Russia not allowing the players to come over. As much as the case as we made for, yes, he will come over, there's maybe an equal one that he won't. And we look at the example of Ivan Fedotov, the Philadelphia Flyers goaltender prospect, he was scheduled to come to the U.S., try out for a spot to be Carter Hart's backup. But then Russia happened, more specifically the Russian army. Technically, CKSA Moscow has ties to the military. So technically, Fedotov was the private property of the Russian army. His agent tried to work out an arrangement. When that didn't work, he was, quote, detained and sent to a Russian military installation. Not only just an installation, an installation up in, like, the North Sea. And Fedotov had to serve his full year-long military duties to not come to the NHL. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, right, with someone like Mitchkov. 
who is going to be the face of Russian hockey, or at least is projected to be the single face of Russian hockey moving forward. To me, I think there's a non-zero possibility that something like this might happen if he tries to come to North America. Of course, we saw the Kaprizov issues just this summer that luckily got figured out. But again, it just adds to that that ever-growing list of worries if you're picking in the top five. Yeah, you got to wonder what Kent Hughes and other GMs are thinking around the league. Yeah. At this point in time, it's looking tempting, right? But there is that risk involved. So it's just one of those things where you really need to weigh the pros and the cons of of each of it, right? And really just see what kind of fits best for your individual team. Are you a team that's really looking for that game-breaking talent? Or are you a player that could just benefit from, you know, just having a really skilled, you know, first or second line type of player? Just really the question, do you want to really swing for the fences here? Or do you want to make sure that at least you're getting that RBI for sure? Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see um, as it comes uh, through, you know, however, you know, I feel like there's so much on the line. I'm just a fan of seeing Canada, Russia play against each other at the Olympics in the NHL. So I'd really like to just see that all come together. So just keep in positive that uh, Russian players will be allowed to come over here, which I think will be the eventuality. Let's hope so. But either way, in either case, Jesse, someone has to pick this guy. And who will that be? The draft lottery, of course, as of the recording of this video has not happened. It's happening about 20 days from now on May 8th. And there's a lot of question marks. If we look at the draft order right now, if you go by highest odds, it'll go Anaheim, Columbus, Chicago, San Jose, Montreal, and then with Arizona and Philadelphia, maybe having outside shots at Mitchkov if no GM wants to take them. It seems like Connor Bedard is surefire going to go number one, but for these other teams that end up not winning the lottery and getting that number one pick, you have to wonder, who's going to take him? A team like Columbus, who just got Johnny Gaudreau, who already has some good young players, some young Russian talent, might be willing to take someone like Mitchkov knowing that that uh, he might have some buddies, some other young Russian players to play with. A team like San Jose, who's kind of like questionably in the middle of a rebuild when they still have like the likes of Thomas Hurdle, Eric Carlson, Mark Edward Vlasic still on the books. But then you have teams like Montreal who are, they just had the first overall pick and Uri Slavkovsky. And, you know, you just got to wonder like who is going to, for lack of a better term, which GM is going to have the balls to go and go after Matvey Mitchkov? Seems like to me, if Columbus doesn't get first, they're a good shot. But like, what is your prediction for Mitchkov? At the end of the day, where do you see him falling in the top five? Well, he's kind of the consensus uh, fourth overall pick right now. I think with just all the news kind of going around, I think that kind of changes him from being a surprise second overall pick mm -hmm. to probably falling in that fourth or fifth um type position you know so that being said that does kind of lead to that montreal san jose range where i feel like san jose is more of a compete now sort of window um so i would see them picking somewhere else whereas with montreal the rebuild is still a couple years of way so i see them thinking hey mitchkov fits perfectly he's going to be developing great um you know over over in Russia in the meantime, so I could see them picking a player like him for sure. I think so too, and I actually think Montreal is a good destination for Mitchkov. Um, not much Russian talent on Montreal right now. They traded Dadanov for Denis Gurionov, who is currently on the team but might not be next year. Um, so that might be a slight concern if you're Kent Hughes and Jeff Gorton looking at it. Um, but I think you might be right. I think Montreal's rebuild and maybe Chicago's rebuild are right. Like if they fall near that 4 5 range, if other teams win the lottery. Mm -hmm. I think that those teams are maybe the most primed to take him purely for the timeline because remember, he won't be in North America for a minimum of three more years at the age of 21 and maybe a bit longer after that. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. My prediction, Jesse, as we bring this back up, I think he goes at five to Montreal. I think Kent Hughes, Jeff Gorton, they want to go after this guy. If he's available at five, they take him. I think that if he's not available at five. I think it's Columbus that takes him simply because Yarmo Kekalainen has, he likes having Russian talent on the team and it'll work. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see, very interesting to follow. Uh, but yeah, let us know down in the comment section below what you guys think. And if you guys agree or disagree with our assessment of Matvey Michkov, Jesse, we did a bit of research into this. I mean, overall, I know you're a pretty big fan of Michkov. I mean, we hope he goes to our Habs, but uh, I mean, overall to, to end off this video, do you think it's worth the risk if you are the Habs 100%? It is. When it you're is. being compared with a generational type player, you have to. They come across, rarely they're unicorns. And you really need to strike when the iron's hot. Montreal needs that top end scoring skill. We don't need another second line center. We need that top line superstar, Alex Kovalev, but way better. 
Matt V. Mitchkov, can't wait for it. Matt V. Mitchkov, can't wait. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to this point in the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We love doing videos like this. We might do more for other prospects that could fall in that top five range and maybe fall to the Habs. But we, we wanted this to be more of an overview of Mitchkov as a prospect overall. So we really hope you enjoyed. If you could subscribe, it'd be really appreciated. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.